welcome those for joining us on Facebook Live uh, to our service from All Saints Belton. Welcome to everyone as we uh, join together in worship of God. Jesus says, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. In worship, let us come to the one who offers peace and rest. So let's pray. Against the noise of the world, we cover our ears. At dis distressing sights, we close our eyes. To confusing thoughts, we close our minds. And amid the clamor of distress, we close our hearts. Loving God, your ears and eyes are ever open to our needs. Help us to worship with open hearts and minds that we may have open ears and eyes to see the work that you call us to do and open hands to do it. Amen. We bow down and worship him now. How great, how awesome is he. Together we sing. Everyone sing. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with his glory. Holy is the Lord. God Almighty, the earth is filled with His glory, the earth is filled with His glory. We stand, we stand and lift up our hands, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship Him now, how great how awesome is he together we sing everyone sing holy is the lord god almighty the earth is filled with his glory holy is the lord god almighty the earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with His glory. It's rising up all around. It's the anthem of the Lord's renown. It's rising up all around. It's the anthem of the Lord's renown, it's rising up all around. It's the anthem of the Lord's renown, it's rising up all around. It's the anthem of the Lord's renown. Together we sing. Everyone sing, together we sing, together we sing, everyone sing. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty, the earth is filled with His glory. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with His glory. Yeah. 
Your grace is enough, more than I need. At your word I will believe. I wait for you, draw near again. Let your spirit make me new, and I will fall at your feet. I will fall at your feet, and I will worship you here. Your presence in me, Jesus, light the way. By the power of your word, I am restored. I am redeemed by your spirit I am free and I will fall at your feet I will fall at your feet and I will worship you here freely you gave it all for us surrendered your life upon that cross great is the love poured out for all this is our God lifted on high from death to life forever our God is glorified servant and king rescued the world this is our god freely you gave yes freely you gave it all for us surrendered your life upon that cross great is the love poured out for all this is our God Lifted on high from death to life Forever our God is glorified Servant and King rescued the world This is our God And I will fall at your feet I will fall at your feet and I will worship you Lord, who understands our every need, we adore you for stilling our turmoil, for being the calm in the storm, our anchor in the deep, and the safe port awaiting us always. Amen. Lord God, whose arms are always open to us, we come before you today with hearts and minds open to receive your teaching. Lead us to understand who you are and what you have done and what you require of us as witnesses. In Jesus' name, amen. We come to a time where we acknowledge our failings before God, our confessing. Just give you a moment or two just to bring your thoughts to God. For God to put his finger upon the things he wants you to bring to him.
Lord God, we confess that when distress comes knocking at our door, all that we have learned and should know goes flying out of the window. Our minds in disarray. We fail to turn to trusted sources of help. Forgive us for getting how to seek you. We forget your sustaining word in scripture. Your presence when we turn to you in prayer. The calm that is to be found when we seek you in community. We're sorry for turning in on ourselves. Our minds going round in circles. Come, risen Lord, break the cycle of our despair. Amen. Our understanding is dark, clouded by dismay, fearful and lacking in fear, in faith. Yet we know that you will understand, Lord. Shine your light on us and banish the dark thoughts that overwhelm us. Forgive us the deeds committed while fearful and bewildered and lead us forward in the light of your love. Amen. Lord, you have been our host when you came first from heaven to the world we call ours. Shepherds and kings were your guests. When you accepted hospitality in the homes of others, you turned the tables and became the host, feeding hearts and souls through your teaching. When you came to the disciples, newly risen, you took charge and saw to their needs of mind and body. We praise you, Jesus, ground of our being, ground of our believing for standing among us in your risen power, host to the world that is yours, not ours. Amen. So for, I want to turn to talk to the children. I can see, I could see uh, Noah and Lily. I don't know whether you how you feel when you feel happy and whether you feel sad. We've talked before about being on a roller coaster, going up really high and then shooting down low and the kind of fear that comes with the shooting down low. We don't know what's going to come next when we go round a corner very fast on a, on, um, a roller coaster. My boys used to, one of my boys used to love roller coasters, the other not. Uh, Tim didn't like them either, so I was the one that ended up having to go on these things not liking them myself. So I used to be really scared when I was on the roller coaster. Have you been on roller coasters? Have you been on things like the, the Big Dipper or the Big Roller Coaster in Great Yarmouth? Are you going to talk to me, Lily? No, you, have you been on anything at Pleasurewood Hills? Going round and round? Yeah. yeah. Do you like those rides? You don't know. I don't like anything that goes faster than I can run, and I can't run. So it's got to be really, really slow for me. And I don't like watching anyone on. When my boys used to go on, I couldn't watch. I used to have to shut my eyes. One of mine nearly fell out of one of them, which was really scared. I went round holding on to him for, his, for his dear life. But our feelings, you know, are like that. And our faith can be like that. We've just prayed about how sometimes what we believe goes out the window. We forget what we believe, what's important to us. When, when we're struggling with fears. And that's the kind of situation that we will hear about with the disciples being really scared having really got to grips with um, the fact that Jesus had risen from the dead and how Thomas um, doesn't know and he won't trust what the others say. So sometimes when we're feeling like that, it's a bit difficult. I saw that she, um, Noah and Lily had a whole load of pictures in their hands. Were they going to show us some of the things that we've been doing over Easter? Wow, are you, I can't hear you. Have you gone on mute again? 
Yeah, you know what that was. Oh, wow, you've been very busy. Well, that's what they came in with your Easter egg, isn't it? Have you enjoyed doing that? <laughs> You've not got what to say for yourself today, have you, sweetheart? Has that been fun, Lily, doing your Easter activities? What about eating well, the Easter eggs? Sure that bit's fun. <laughs> You're not going to say a lot. Yeah, sweetie. I think we've got any of the bits you've done that we can show, but I don't think we've got anything going, don't we? Right. Well, I'm going to um, move on. If you've if you've printed one off from what I sent around, there's there's some more activities that look about talking about touching Jesus' hands when he says, My Lord and my God. Um, but Tracy, you've got a song for us before we do anything I have, else. And it's it says about um God being higher than a skyscraper, but he's also higher than a roller coaster. So can we just have a practice? Can you all and adults you do have to do this and I can see you. Can you all put your arms up as high as you can and just see how high they go? Really, really high. That's it. Now can you go down as low as you can? I'd say touch your toes, but I can't say. And as wide as you can. Excellent. In that case, there's no excuse for not doing the action. So we're going to do Our God is a Great Big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hands. Our God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hand. He's higher than a skyscraper and he's deeper than a submarine. He's wider than the universe and beyond my wildest dreams. And he's known me and he's loved me since before the world began. How wonderful to be a part of God's amazing plan. Here we go. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hands. Our God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hands. He's higher than a skyscraper and he's deeper than a submarine. He's wider than the universe and beyond my wildest dreams. And he's known me and he's loved me since before the world began. How wonderful to be a part of God's amazing plan. Last time, our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hands. Well done, adults. That was really impressive. Marion, I could see, I thought you were going to fall off your seat at one point. You were reaching so high. So well done, adults. Very good. And kids as well, but adults especially impressive today. So Richard, could you read for us our first reading? Richard and Sylvia reading, doing the readings today. Yeah. Yes, the first reading is from 1 John 1 to 10 and 1 John 2 to verse 2. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared. We have seen it and testified to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life with which the Father has appeared to us. We proclaim to you that we have seen and heard, so that you may also have fellowship with us, and our fellowship is with the Father, and with his son, Jesus Christ, we write this to make our joy complete. 
we don't show up. This on is the message we have heard from him no, and his led you. Yeah. God is light, and him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in light, as he is the light, we have fellowship with one another, and blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we complain to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only ours, but also the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The second reading comes from John chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. Jesus appears to his disciples on the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Jesus appears to Thomas. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and, the, and put my fingers in, in, uh, finger where the nails were and put my hands into the side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here in, in, my, in my hands. Reach out and put your hands put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus t told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed be those who have not seen and yet have believed. The purpose of John's gospel. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that he, he, by believing in you, may have life in, in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, speech God. Thank you. And now Derek is going to bring God's word to us. You will need a mic. Has he got a mic?
Sorry for the delay, folks. A little bit of dancing there just to keep you entertained while we're waiting. Today's uh, theme uh, is testing truth. The first reading that we heard was a letter from the disciple John, and he starts off just by telling us that it's about what he has seen and what he has heard. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of God. So he's telling us that this is about what he has seen and heard. And the second reading reminds us that the disciples saw Jesus after the resurrection. But Thomas wasn't with them, although he was a week later. And in that passage is one of the passages which really helps me to believe and trust that Jesus and God are the same thing, the same person. Because when Jesus uh, met with the disciples a week later, it says Thomas was with them. And though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. just want to pause at that point because... If Jesus wasn't God, one thing we know about him was he was honest, that a lie never passed his lips. And if he never lied, then he would have stopped Thomas in his tracks there and said, hang on a minute, I don't mind you calling me Lord, but don't call me God. But he didn't. He accepted what Thomas said and said to him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And we are counted among that number. These are testimonies about what was seen and heard from people who were there at the time. Now there's a passage in Jeremiah, which is very famous, where God says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and come to me and pray to me and I will listen to you. And this is to me the important part, which perhaps sometimes we, we, we forget about. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. If we want to find and test the truth, we have to do it with our whole heart. If we want to go into this seriously, from any standpoint, or from any religion, or from a position of no religion, and we do it with our whole heart, we will find God, and we will find Jesus, who is God in the flesh, as Thomas found when he met with him. What about if we do things half-hearted? We all know what happens when we do something half-heartedly. A football team where the tackles are weak, the shot at goal has no power, a team plays half-heartedly. The commentators will tell us that one team won every tackle. One team got to the ball first. One team played with all their hearts and the other didn't. No oomph. We need oomph if we want to find the truth. We need to go after it wholeheartedly. If I was going to buy a new item, a dishwasher, washing machine, a car, for example, what would I do? I might try asking friends what they have done, what their experience has been. I might try reading the reviews in magazines, particularly those devoted to the topic, but not those owned by the company who were trying to sell me something. But I want to hear the opinions of others who will not be influenced by their personal preferences. I may look back to my own previous experience. What I had what had before and how good it was. Was it reliable? 
Do I want the same thing again, the newer model, or do I want to move on to something new? Now, most weeks in church, we will say a statement of faith. We call this the creed. Now, every line of the creed is based on Scripture. It is based on the Word of God. So, for example, we sometimes start with, I believe in God, the Father Almighty. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 6 says, This is what the Lord says, Israel's King and Redeemer, the Lord Almighty. I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me, there is no God. Isaiah 45, verse 5, I am the Lord and there is no other. Apart from me, there is no God. I will strengthen you, though you have not acknowledged me. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, right at the beginning of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And John's letter, chapter 1, verses 1 and 3, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. And in Acts, chapter 14, verse 15, Men, why are you doing this? We too are only men, human like you. They were being worshipped. We are bringing you good news, telling you to turn from those worthless things to the living God who made heaven and earth and the sea and everything that is in them. The Bible telling us that God is creator of heaven and earth. We follow on with, I believe in Jesus Christ. Tells us in Luke chapter 2, verse 11, Today in the town of David, a Savior has, has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And he is God's only Son. Jesus himself said, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, so that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And we follow on with that. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. And we've just heard Thomas said to Jesus, my Lord and my God. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 1, verse 35. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, speaking to Mary, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. And he would be born of a virgin Mary. In verse 26 and 27 of Luke chapter 1, in the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Now, I could go on through the whole of the creed, finding the chapters and verses. I've got them listed here. If you want them, then you can ask me for them by sending me an email or a text or ringing me up and asking me. But it does go on to say, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic or Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We have a creed which states for us what we believe. Now, one of the things that I come back to again and again is a, a sermon that I preached a few years ago, and I've used the same information again, and I've used it in prayers, and I've used it in Bible study, and it is about fact and faith. Fact is something which cannot be changed. Whether Jesus was born or not, is a matter of fact. He was either born and lived, or he wasn't and he didn't. What happened in his life either happened or didn't. It is not a matter of belief. Believing, if I believe it, that does not make it true. If someone else doesn't believe it, that doesn't mean it's not true. It either happened or it didn't. So we have to choose to believe but it won't change the facts. And so we can go through with some statements. I've done this before a number of times, but it's worth going through it again. 
Is it a matter of fact or is it a matter of faith? Try labeling these statements with the word fact or faith. I, can, I suggest you that you say either there is or there isn't, there was or there wasn't, then the answer must be a fact. So we say, for example, Jesus was born 2,000 years ago. He either was or he wasn't. So that makes it a fact. If he was, it's a fact. If he wasn't, it doesn't matter. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. He either was or he wasn't. Jesus lived for about 33 years, mostly in and around Palestine. He either was or he wasn't. He did or he didn't. Jesus healed people. He either did or he didn't. Jesus was tried by the Romans under Pontius Pilate. He either was or he wasn't. Jesus was crucified. He either was or he wasn't. Jesus rose from the dead. He either did or he didn't. Jesus was seen by the disciples and others alive after his death. He either was or he wasn't. For me, it's a matter of fact. Faith is believing and trusting in the facts. The Bible is quite uh, open. It says that if these things did not happen, there's no point in believing in them. In 1 Corinthians 15, I like this because the Bible is open and honest with us. If there's no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless and so is your faith. More than that, we are found to be false witnesses about God. For we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him if, in fact, the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. For those, then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. I like the opening of Luke's Gospel. Because he is, it's like the, the reporters that we've been seeing on the television the last few days, giving us information about what has happened uh, at Windsor Castle, that the Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, had passed away. The people come and they report the facts as they have found them. And this is what Luke did in his gospel. And so he begins it by saying, I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning and that he had decided to write an orderly account and he writes it to a man who he refers to as the most excellent Theophilus and he wants to do it so that Theophilus may know the certainty of the things that he'd been taught in other words he wanted to get to the truth about Jesus and make sure that what Theophilus heard was true like an investigative reporter today. He interviewed people who were there at the time. And he wrote down the facts. Luke is not listed in the disciples. He, he may have been there with Jesus. He may have seen some of this for himself. But he obviously spoke to people who were there. Like Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist. Right the way through to someone called Cleopas. Who met the resurrected Jesus on the road to Emmaus. And the disciples who ate fish with the risen Jesus on the beach and then saw him ascend into heaven. Luke writes in the book of Acts, in my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day that he was taken up to heaven. And he goes on to report what had happened with the disciples over that period of time, including what happened with uh, Saul when he met Jesus on the road to... Um, the road to, the road to, uh, I can't remember the name of that road. What was that road? Damascus. And, he, and there was a bright light that shone, and Jesus spoke to him. And that's all recorded in the book of Acts. Luke tells it as it was, based on what he learned from those who were there. 
He didn't say things like, well, I, I guess what happened was, or I suppose what people might have said was, he writes in factual terms with their explanation or interpretation. He just tells it as it is so that we can know too the certainty of what happened. Sometimes we get asked the question, and it's a matter of opinion. I suspect that there's one question, guys, if you're listening, there's one question that we should never answer. And it is from your wife, your girlfriend, does my bum look big in this? Never answer that question. It's a matter of opinion, and your opinion will count and depending on what you say, it will count against you. But the Bible does answer questions for us. And we can find answers in our lives as well. You know, so many times, blessings come in disguise. Who would have thought that the God and creator of the universe would have come to this little planet and uh, be born to live among us? Jesus called himself the Son of Man, and after a little while it became quite obvious that he was the Son of God. From that very first miracle at the wedding in Cana in Galilee, it was clear that the blessings you brought were in disguise. People asked, isn't this Joseph's son, the carpenter's son? Isn't his mother's name Mary? And aren't his brothers James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? No one believed that Jesus was anything special. When Nathanael was invited to meet with Jesus, his response was, Nazareth? Can anything good come from Nazareth? Philip just said to him, well, come and see. Now, he must have seen something special in Jesus because Nathanael became one of the disciples. So Jesus came into this world. Even today, so often, his blessings to us are in disguise. In fact, he encourages us to be in disguise. When you give to the needy, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. We may even be surprised at who we have blessed. Keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, some people have shown hospitali hospitality to angels without knowing it. And you say that when we do this for the hungry or the thirsty or strangers, then we do it for Jesus. We could be blessings in disguise. But I suppose that the biggest blessing in disguise was Jesus' death on the cross. What a blessing in disguise that was. Throughout his life on earth, the truth of who he was was often disguised, but revealed to people at certain times. It was revealed to the shepherds and the wise men very early in Jesus' life. The truth was revealed to Simon Peter when Jesus asked him and the disciples who they thought he was. And Jesus heard Simon Peter say, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And he replied to him, you are blessed, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. The Bible tells us that as Jesus breathed his last breath, the curtain in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there at the foot of the cross in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, surely this man was the Son of God. The truth is that on the cross you breathed forgiveness over us, paid the price for sin, and bought us salvation on the cross. What a blessing in disguise. You revealed who you were, the Lord Jesus, after your resurrection, you revealed yourself to the disciples in that upper room, as we heard read. And Thomas said to you, you said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hands, reach out and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. And those words from Thomas, my Lord and my God, because you have seen me and believed, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. The Bible is full of illustrations which show us what God can do. When we are sinking, Jesus can lift us up. When we are dying, Jesus can give us new life. 
here and now and on into eternity. When we are facing an enemy, Jesus can fight for us, sustain us, and encourage us. The Gideons have been putting Bibles into hotel rooms for many, many years. And in the back of those um, Gideon's Bibles, or in the front, I think it might be the front, there is a whole section which says where to find help when. And it goes through, and there's a long list of all of life's problems. And those problems, it gives scriptures to help us. And there are testimony after testimony after testimony of people who have found that when God has been sought with all our hearts, then God has turned up. Just recently, I've been looking at uh, passages on uh, YouTube, and there are so many testimonies there from people whose lives have been changed completely because they have trusted in the Son of God. Now this morning, I would say probably, I have been preaching to the converted. And the reason that I say that is because I've been talking to myself. Because I need to learn this stuff for myself. I need to trust it for myself. And this came to me as I prayed this morning and was preparing to preach. And this is what I prayed. Some of you will have read this already. Heavenly Father, thank you for reminding me today that all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. It would be easy to think that I can use this and go and teach others, rebuke others, correct others, train others in righteousness, so that they are thoroughly equipped for every good work. But if I think that, I have missed the point. Before I even begin to think that way, indeed, if ever I can think that way, I need to take this on board for myself. All scripture is breathed by God to teach me, rebuke me, correct me, train me in righteousness, so that I will be equipped for every good work. I must remember what Jesus, the carpenter from Nazareth, said. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye. When you yourself fail to see the plank in your own eye, your brother, let, sorry, how can you say to your brother, brother, let me take the speck out of your eye. When you yourself fail to see the plank in your own eye, you hypocrite, first take the plank out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. I find this verse is scary. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. I think I need to give myself a good talking to. I preach to the converted. Do I really want to be judged more strictly? Lord Jesus, I come to you to learn from you to be a disciple, not a teacher. Lord, I come to you let my heart be changed, renewed, flowing from the grace that I found in you. And Lord, I've come to know the weaknesses I see in me will be stripped away by the power of your love. Hold me close. Let your love surround me. Bring me near. Draw me to your side. And as I wait, I'll rise up like the eagle and I will soar with you. Your spirit leads me on in the power of your love. We're going to declare our faith in the words of the Creed now. I believe in God, the Almighty Father, who is creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, given birth by the Virgin Mary, and suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose from the dead, ascended into heaven, 
is seated at the right Father's right hand, he will return to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and in everlasting life. Amen. Trace is going to lead us in worship. In the desert place Though I walk through the wilderness Blessed be your name Every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to praise When the darkness closes in Lord, still I will say Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name On the road marked with suffering Though there's pain in the offering Blessed be your name Every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to praise When the darkness closes in Lord, still I will say Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name, you give. You give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to say, Blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious change your name you shall no longer be called wounded outcast lonely or afraid cause I will change your name your new name shall be 
confidence, joyfulness, overcoming one, faithfulness, friend of God, one who seeks my face. I will change your name. You shall no longer be called wounded, outcast, lonely or afraid. Oh, I will change your name. Your new name shall be confidence, joyfulness, overcoming one, faithfulness, friend of God, one who seeks my face. Yes, I will change your name, your new Confidence, joyfulness, overcoming one, faithfulness, friend of God, one who seeks my faith. Mistakes. You have new mercies for me every day. Your love never fails. Oh. You stay the same through the ages. Your love never changes. There may be pain in the night, but joy comes in the morning. oceans rage I don't have to be afraid because I know that you love me and your love never fails the wind is strong and the water's deep I'm not alone in these open seas your love never fails chasm is far too wide I never thought I'd reach the other side your love never fails oh. and you stay the same through the ages your love never changes there may be pain in the night but joy comes in the morning and when the oceans rage I don't have to be afraid because I know that you love me your love never fails you make all things work together for my good yes you make all things work together for my good Lord, you make all things work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. And 
you stayed the same through the ages your love never changes there may be pain in the night the joy comes in the morning and when the oceans rage i don't have to be afraid because i know that you love me your love never fails your love never fails your love never fails to ask Judy to lead us in our prayers. Eternal, everlasting God, you are eternally patient with us, and no matter what we do, you persevere with us. Help each of us to show patience and perseverance with others, and with this prayer in our hearts and on our lips, we pray for those we know and love, and hear of this day. God, in whom we believe, bless them. For those struggling to accept the Easter message of resurrection, for those who long to have faith but miss the final step, who long to see Jesus but doubt what they see, seeing only as if in a mirror dimly, who long to hear your word but grasp only a muffle and a murmur, who yearn to feel your presence but shy away from contact. For those who need convincing of the truth in an age of fake news and skewed views. God in whom we believe, bless them. For those whose health and well-being teeter on the edge of uncertainty or insanity, pain, disfigurement and anguish. For those living with COVID in all its forms, immediate and long-term, for those whose treatment is delayed and who are ground down by the mental and physical pain that can't yet be treated, for those who live with darkness and dread bombarding their waking moments, God in whom we believe, bless them. For those without meaning and purpose in their lives, who wake to the morning light and dread the empty day that lies ahead, for those who dread the dark nights of wakefulness, tossing and turning. For those who feel there is no hope for tomorrow, no vision for the future, no plan for their lives. For those without a stable home life, without meaningful work and prospects. For those without the shelter of a home, with no roots to a place, who are constantly forced to move on, change direction through war or violence, political unrest, prejudice, religious hatred, and so much more. For those who seek refuge in new places and new lands, with new languages and new norms. God in whom we believe, bless them. For the countries who make news headlines and then slip from view with little changed, for the people of Myanmar, Mozambique and Ethiopia, whose struggle goes on to keep life together against so much hatred, prejudice, greed and violence. We cannot imagine or comprehend the lives these people are forced to live, the challenges they face, the fragility and fear and destitution of their lives. For those who are victims of modern slavery, who are all but imprisoned, abused, made to feel worthless, undervalued, inhuman, who are frightened and bewildered and a long way from home, family and support. God in whom we believe, bless them. The disciples gathered behind closed doors, not only for fear of the Jewish authorities, but they gathered to grieve the loss of their friend, their leader, their visionary, their Lord. We pray for those who mourn the loss of family or friends, and especially those who have had to grieve alone in these COVID times without the support of those who love them. May the gentle easing of restrictions and the lengthening of the days bring them light and hope for life ahead. God in whom we believe, bless them. And for ourselves we pray, 
that we might banish shadows that hold us back and keep us fixed to what we are familiar with, even the new familiar, when we can be afraid to step out, step on, step forward, step up. We pray that we might know the wisdom of the psalmist, the grace of God, the blessing of the spirit, the love and companionship of each other, and the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ. These are our prayers this day. Amen. Let us bring before God those who have never known the transformative power of love, those who live in fear of what others may do to them. We pray to you, O Lord. Those who have the strength to stand up to that which is wrong, we pray to you, O Lord. Those who have the courage and the opportunity to speak out against injustice, we pray to you, O Lord. Those who give of themselves to help those in need, we pray to you, O Lord. Those who work to make this world a better place, we pray to you, O Lord. Those known to us who need our prayers at this time, we pray to you, O Lord. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So I'm wondering how the children have got on. How have you got on with your activities? Have you been busy? I can see Lily, but Lily wasn't talking to me earlier. I don't know if she's... And I can see Noah too. Are you talking to me now? Have you been doing something that you can share with us? Nothing. You can show me a new sheet, you Yeah, there's apples that you can draw behind you. You can have it back in a second. He's dropping little magic. Lily, this is recorded for everyone. <laughs> I believe you have been busy. Yeah, you unscrambled, didn't you? Oh, brilliant. Very tidy writing as well. It's good writing. We can read it easily. Yeah. I think we best leave you to yourself. We're going to... Um, Sing again. We're going to worship. Thank you, Tracy. Let's come to our last song. One day when heaven was filled with his praises, one day when sin was as black as could be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin dwelt among men my example is he word became flesh and the light shined among us his glory revealed living he loved me dying he saved me buried he carried my sins far away Rising he justified freely forever One day he's coming, oh glorious day Oh glorious day One day they led him up Calvary's mountain One day they nailed him to die on a tree suffering anguish despised and rejected bearing our sins my 
Redeemer is He. Hands that healed nations stretched out on a tree and took the nails for me. Cause living He loved me, dying He saved me, buried He carried my sins far away. Rising He justified freely forever. One day He's coming, oh glorious day, oh glorious day. One day the grave could conceal Him no longer. One day the stone rolled away from the door. Then he arose, over death he had conquered. Now he's ascended, my Lord evermore. Death could not hold him, the grave could not keep him from rising again. Cause living he loved me, dying he saved me. Buried he carried my sins far away. Rising he justified freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day, oh glorious day, glorious day. One day the trumpet will sound for His coming. One day the skies with His glories will shine. Wonderful day my beloved one bringing. My Savior Jesus is mine. Cause living He loved me, dying He saved me. Buried he carried my sins far away. Rising he justified freely forever. One day he's coming, a oh, glorious day. Living he loved me, dying he saved me. Buried he carried my sins far away. Rising He justified freely forever. One day He's coming, oh glorious day, oh glorious day. Ooh, oh glorious day. Oh glorious day. Mm -hmm. So before we um, close our service, we're going to just pause uh, to pray for the royal family, uh, for uh, Prince Philip. And just to say to you, there will be things that we are, will do in the coming days that will um, enable others to thank God for him. Eternal, everlasting God, we pray for those we know and love and hear of this day. We pray for the royal family mourning the loss of the Duke of Edinburgh as devoted wife, sons and daughter, grandchildren and great-grandchildren and so much more. For the staff who have been COVID secure with the family, giving all the care and support they could. And as we pray for them, we give thanks for the life of Prince Philip for his devotion to our Queen and his family, for his devotion and duty to our country and the Commonwealth and beyond, for his steadfastness and his community support and engagement, and for his faith and witness. God in whom we believe, bless them. There will be a, a service of commem commemoration on Friday. Uh, at 6.15 in All Saints Church. If you wish to attend, would you contact me, please, to reserve a seat, because we are limited to the numbers who can come.
So as we close our uh, service, uh, we're going to say a prayer. And I'm going to ask you to do some actions, children and adults. There's a looking around and making the book sign, handing over our hands over our hearts and touching our forehead and open our, 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 our arms wide. So that we're actually doing actions that say something about what we're saying. Jesus, when life throws us into turmoil, meet us in the everyday things. Meet us in the scriptures. Open our hearts to your love and open our minds to your will. Amen. We go into the world to walk in God's light, to rejoice in God's love and to reflect God's glory. Amen.